Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to look at power automated flows versus automated rules. And as you've guessed, this is entirely based on SharePoint lists and libraries. And by the end of this video, you will have a really good understanding of what these automated rules are such that before you actually go and build your own flow from scratch, you'll check out these automated rules. So stick around, it'll be fun. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now when I talk about the automate rules, this is what I mean. On the top you see automate, you come over here and you go and create a rules, hence the term automate rules. Now when I come in again and click on it, you will see that there's an option to create a rule and these are the four ones that we're going to focus on today. In fact, what I classify as the most powerful ones are these two. And what I'll do to prove that is we'll take these two scenarios and we'll try to replicate that in Power Automate by ourselves. And after that, I guarantee you will see how powerful these are and you might even start using them. So let's just jump into it, all right? The first one we're gonna look at is this one right here, or column changes. But what I'm gonna do is let's take a look at the SharePoint list. And you might be actually very familiar with the SharePoint list because if you've ever done any Power Apps app in the day, this is actually the data that's provided to you in an Excel spreadsheet. I've just taken that and gone ahead and imported that into a SharePoint list. So you're kind of familiar with this data. What we're going to do is we're going to use those rules that any time for any of them, a price changes. That's why I want you to go ahead or I want the system to go ahead and send me an email alert. And so let's go ahead and do it. All right, let's go first now into automate. We'll go ahead into rules. We'll go and create a rule. And in the create rule, the first one I'm going to do is a column changes. And as the name suggests, if any time any of the value in a column changes, I want you to send me an email notification. But what I'm gonna do is I want you to send me an email notification when the price column changes. And it's as simple as this. When you come on and you say when, choose a column, I select a column, and over here, I'm gonna select the price. And now when you click on send an email to, it already gives you these three suggestions, which are very powerful suggestions. It bases it directly on first the two SharePoint columns, created by, modified by, these are the out of the box, SharePoint columns that automatically is provided. We don't even have to populate them. It automatically does it. But it also knows who's coming over here and adding these rules. Therefore, the term me. But what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and just select this for me right now because I want those email notifications directly coming to me. And I'll go ahead and say create. And literally, it is that simple that if any time a price changed in this column, it'll go ahead and send me an email notification. Also, I love that it's got a toggle on off switch over right here. This obviously, let's get, face it, this is very similar to Power Automate as well, all right? It's just, so it's pretty neat that it actually gives you that functionality that you don't have to go delete it, just go ahead and turn it off. So let's test it, all right? I'm gonna come back in over here and I'll go now randomly pick a list um, item. I'll go ahead and select that one. I'll go ahead and you know, do an edit. And in the edit, very specifically, I'm gonna change this price. And I'll say, no, the price went up by another $100 from $599 and went over to $699. Remember, from $599.99, it bumped up to $699.99. And I'll go and click on this, and there you go. It's gone ahead and saved it. So let me go to my Outlook, and right over here, you see a notification has come in. And this is the format of how that notification comes in. But what it does is it says, hey, Daniel Christian, not Daniel Christian, it says, Daniel Christian changed the price for, to $6.99 for this device. And if I go and click on the item, it'll directly take me to that SharePoint list, specifically to that item. And if you see, it does it through the SharePoint list side over here. But it took me directly to not just the SharePoint site, not just the SharePoint list, directly to that item. It's showing me right over here. This is how powerful this system is. Now, what we'll do is we'll take something like this, and we'll go ahead and now replicate it in Power Automate, and I'll show you how much work is involved over there. Now, for the sake of time, I've already gone ahead and built that Power Automate flow, but I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. So here we go. I'm gonna go in my Power Automate flow, and this is the one that I built. So I'm gonna go and click on Edit now, and in my edit, the first thing I have to decide is what's gonna trigger this flow. And it makes sense, because I'm gonna replicate what we have on the rule. So in the rule, when we went ahead and edited an item, that's when the change happened. So here is the exact same thing. The trigger is obviously a SharePoint connector, but the trigger is when an item or a file is modified. And there you go ahead and give it the site address, you go ahead and give it the SharePoint list of the library, and that is your trigger. 
But after that, I have to go ahead and now get an item so I can go and get the information about that item. And how do I do that? Well, for that, again, you gotta go ahead and use this get changes for an item or a file. That's actually an action that's available over there. And then you go and put in all this other information. However, here's the new thing. For the since, if I actually go and take that off, it'll give you that these are the things that it's looking for. So over here, when you come in and you go to the dynamic content, and over there, just search for start token. I just start for start token, and there you go. That's the one, trigger window start token. That's the one that you capture. And this is how you're able to go ahead and get all the changes for items which have been changed. Now remember, this is something we have to do. And if, but let's not stop over here, because we've got to still do it. We went ahead and grabbed the change that's happened. Now I need to do is, did this change come pertaining that one specific column that we are focused on? And that column has to do with the price column. And so for that, I'm going to X this out and you'll actually see that based on this little action that we've done, this is what we are able to see. It actually gives me the functionality to say, has column changed? And all it does is it gives me Boolean values, which is a true or a false. So here I can actually now scroll down and say, has the column changed for the column type price? Because that's the one that I'm in, interested in. So when I click on that, it should say, if it equals to true, then go ahead and send me an email notification. And in the email notification, after that, you can go ahead and add all those other specific things. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and send it to this one specific user where the email will come in. But so far, this is all that was involved. Let's go and test it. So we'll go back to our SharePoint list. In my SharePoint list, I'll go ahead and now randomly select an item. I'll click on edit and we'll change its value. So it's right, right now it's at 499. I'm gonna just bump that up to 599. I'll click on save it. Now this time we are expecting two different types of notifications. The, one of them will come directly from our autom automate, which is the rule. And now it will also come from the email notification, the flow that we build. Now, when it comes from each of them, we'll score different places. So when, it, when we build the Power Automate flow, it actually went to another user. But for the logic or the rule, it's coming to me. Any second now, you should see an email that is coming from my rule. And there you go. Right there, you are actually able to click on it and you will see that this is the one that came from the rule. We are familiar with this. Now, I want you to pay attention though, because the rule says that a user, Daniel Christian, changed the price to $5.99 for this device. It's giving me all this information. Now let's go and take a look at that email notification because there's an email that came in. This directly came to um, the user named Rosanna, which is perfect. And over here it says, hi Rosanna, the property of the price for Acer laptop has changed and it sends me that information. Now, if you wanna go ahead and put in more information about what all was the previous price and it's just changed to the new price, you've gotta add additional work. You've gotta go ahead and say, put some versioning and information and all of that thing just to go ahead and get the same type of information which we were able to go ahead and get through the rules. So do you kind of understand how powerful that rule is? One more thing I want to point out over here is that right in order for this to work, you actually have to go to your SharePoint list, your SharePoint list, and you've got to turn on the versioning. For some reason, if you are just using the rules, you don't have to turn on versioning. But if you want to go ahead and start grabbing additional information about what was the previous item and how much was the, or not previous item, but how was the previous version, like the price changed from so much to so much, if I want to get the different one, I got to turn on versioning as well. Otherwise, the flow will actually fail. So additional work has to be done in order for you to build a power automate flow. But if you just went and used the rule, it just came up right there. But let, let's not stop over here. Let's go and take it to the next level. So in this manage rules now, I'm going to go ahead and actually see this is the one that we did but I'll create another one. It says that we focused first on the column changes. Now I wanna focus on a specific value of the column changes. So here I'll go and do the same thing. I wanna go and select the price. Then I'll go ahead and say, you know, it is less than or equal to, I'll just go say less than and equal to, and I'll say less than or equal to 1000. It will go ahead and do that. And then after that, I can just go and send that email to me. And here we've added now additional value. Now, some of you Power Automate users might have already noticed, okay, Daniel, I think I, think I get the drift. Over here to replicate this, we can go back to the same Power Automate, but in the addition, I mean the condition piece, over here I can go and add another column. And then the same thing, I'm gonna go and say now for the column, and for this piece over here, all I have to do now is actually go and search for that price, and there you go, the price is, I'm gonna say less than or equal to, and I'll put in that 1000, all right? Now, this piece sounds a little easier because hey, we went ahead and did all of this before, but if you had to just replicate this certain action, the less than and equal to, if you were building that from scratch, remember over here, it was so easy. It was just one, two, three, and then who's the email going to? Over here, you've got to go ahead and do all of this other stuff, but let's, let's test it, all right? So I'll go now and I'll go and save this. 
And keeping in mind though, now we'll actually get three different emails. We're gonna go and get two from this rule and then one from the Power Automate as well. So let's go and do a test. I'll go ahead and now randomly pick another one. And in fact, I need to go ahead and pick this one because it's already got, a, you know, it has to be less than a thousand. So I'll go and edit that. This is at 16,000. I'll go and now change that. I mean, 1,699, I'll go and change that to 999 and 99 cents. We'll go ahead and save this. This should now obviously trigger our rule. It will also go ahead and trigger the email. In fact, this will trigger both of them with the rules because the change happened to the price column. And the second rule is that the change was now a value less than a thousand. So those two notifications will come in from the rules and then we'll also get an email notification from our flow. So let's go and take a look at the email notifications that are coming in from the rule. So I come over here and there you go. These are the two new ones. So the first one now, this is it. See the price changed to 999. That's the one that we were looking at because we wanted, this is the one where the rule was anything that went below a thousand. Well, this is below a thousand. And this is again the original one. Now they both look the same, but that's because we are only going ahead and making sure that they are the, actually the ones tied to an update that happened. So it basically it's, it looks the same, but trust me, they're coming from two different rules. But we also wanna go ahead and now take a look at that email notification that's coming in. And here it is. This email notification is the new one where the price has changed, the property of the price has changed. So do you kind of understand now how much difference there is between when you go and make a rule versus how you go ahead and make a power automate flow? That power automate rule is so powerful. It is able to make complex things like the flow that we build, these complex things, just like that, without any additional work done. All you have to do is go ahead and use, a flow, uh, use the rule over here. Now, I do want to end with the last two other things as well. Let's go and take a look at it because they are pretty simple. I understand from the Power Automate side also they're pretty simple, but let's go and take a look at it, all right? So in order for it to show up again in the top net menu, you've got to uncheck that, go to Power Automate, and then I'll go ahead and select the rules. So I'll go ahead and click on a rule, and then here's when an item is created and when an item is deleted. So if I go ahead and add this now, it is actually in addition to the these two, which I've already done, but I'll go ahead and show that to you anyway, is that when an item is created, nothing else you don't have to have anything else added just who do you want to send this to and right there i'll go ahead and create that one when same thing when i go and create another rule for when an item is deleted who do you want to send it to i'll just send it to me and now we've gone ahead and created all of these other rules and it's a whole good set of rules which are available over here you can go ahead and add and turn them on turn them off all of them are right available at your discretion right over there. So we'll go and actually do a test. Now I'll go ahead and actually randomly take something and I'll just delete it. So let me just go all the way to the bottom. I'll actually pick this one. I'll go ahead and now delete it. And if I were to delete it, the rule will kick in and the rule will actually send me that information. So right here, as you can come and see, I got the notification from the rule. And when I click on it, it's telling me Daniel Christian deleted this item. And then I can go ahead and actually click on the go item. It's actually only taking me to the list because let's face it, the item got deleted. Now I do want to end with talking a little bit more about how we manage the rules and specifically how you handle the permissions from the SharePoint list. So when we go back over here to our SharePoint site itself, when you click on power automate in rules, this is where we've been going. We go and create a rule, but you can also go over here to manage rules and in manage rules, you can also come and create that. Over here, you have the option which says that you can go ahead and create up to 15 rules. So you've got a lot of room over here to create rules based on the scenarios that you want. And like I mentioned before, you can just toggle them on and off because you might want to keep the rule. You just want to don't want to delete it. Go ahead and turn it off. But here's another important thing. When you click on this, learn this document, which is always a good idea to read those documents because uh, it gives you all this additional information. But as I scroll down, one of the important things besides the fact that it gives you any you know, rules and all that, it's giving you these permissions. From the libraries basically and for the list, the user who creates the rules needs to at least have edit access. They don't need to have full control or Uber level access to that SharePoint site. They just need to have edit level access for that SharePoint list in order for them to go ahead and create all of these other rules. So hopefully now you've got a good understanding of what these automated rules are. And if you haven't already, start to use it. Specifically when there's a column change that's happened or a column value changes, even then you can go ahead and send yourself an email notification because I've just proved it to you that if you try to replicate that using Power Automate, there is a bunch of steps that you have to use and also refer to some dynamic values, which honestly, you might have never used it but if you wanted to replicate the same thing that happened on the automate rule, you would have to actually get yourself educated for that. 
So the automate rules is a really powerful out of the box functionality available in SharePoint lists and SharePoint libraries. And my recommendation to you is keep using it. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.